if you want to introduce Here we go. Yeah. We got something a little bit different today. Starting up a little podcast here with Conrad. And we're going to be talking about the NFL. So something very different. Especially fantasy because, I don't know, he, he sucks at fantasy. He needs all the help he can get. How many championships you got in fantasy? Okay, so I, I, I've gotten first seed into the finals every year. Yes, and how many championships you got the show for? Uh, I'm, I'm still working on it. Yeah, I'm still working on it. Drew. At least I have one, even though I didn't do good last year. All right, Drew, this is, this that was, was revenge luck. season. All right, all right, never mind though. Okay, so <laughs> one thing I did want to talk about was I want to talk about the the rookies in the NFL this right. year. Um, so the one thing I didn't get is in in like the fantasy drafts, I think Bijan, yeah, Bijan Robinson, Robinson, when I think it was. Eight, on average, it yes. Was eight. It's just like I, I don't, I, I don't get it personally. Like oh, yeah. I, I get he's a great player, but I, I don't see it, man. Well, I mean, there's a difference in value between actual NFL football and fantasy football. It's different things. Like somebody who's valuable in fantasy football might not have the same value in the NFL. The thing with running backs is they're really good. For fantasy for about two or three years and then after that long term they're not as valuable they're more valuable than quarterbacks in terms of selection in the first couple rounds however um quarterbacks are more valuable if you're looking at you know 10 to 20 years of your franchise and that's who you need so it's all different positions and it's based on different that, things that, that's true but i just don't see the projection like i mm-hmm. i so Bijan is good don't get me wrong and he's gonna be good mm-hmm but like people are treating him like he's gonna be another Saquon. Like I, I don't, I don't see it. Like, like sure he did great in college, but so many other running backs have done just as well. Uh, Derrick Henry, Todd yeah. Gurley, guys who came straight into the NFL and did really great, and then as their per- careers progressed and they had more injuries, their value started to go down. Yeah, so we drafted them early. I'm thinking just this year. I don't. I, I just. I don't know. I think it's real risky to go round one on someone who. I think the more important thing is. Saquon went into a franchise that had nothing. They, they didn't. They, okay, not nothing, but they were they were recovering. Cause they, I mm-hmm. think that had they had they ditched Eli Manning by the time Saquon was drafted. Uh, no, Eli was there for a year. He too. was on the tail end, though. Yeah. I know that. And they were they were obviously going to get back into things. Like they were not the same powerhouse that won the Super Bowl and like did well before. Yeah. But I think that like I mean, the Falcons have a lot of weapons. They already have. A, Thousand yard rusher now Legier and like I I don't know, it seems like there's no way he's gonna get a hundred percent of the snaps or even close to that. Yeah, we're gonna talk a little bit about teams really. That's kind of what I want to focus on. I know we said initially AFC, but we've been talking a lot of NFC. So can we just start with the NFC? I feel like we should. Sure, sure. So let's start over in the NFC East. Um, that's the division of the Dallas Cowboys, the Philadelphia Eagles, New York Giants, and the Washington Commanders. Name change, maybe, again in the future during the next offseason. Is that actually a thing? Yeah. The, I mean, they've had new ownership. Dan Snyder, over oh, yeah. the offseason, no longer the owner. And there's discussion going on about potentially next offseason changing the name again. So I always liked, like, they, they were so better names people had like with logos and everything yeah like that. but anyway i agree with that anyway let's focus on football <laughs> i think my fourth team in the division coming up in fourth place in the nfc east i have washington i i mean they have sam howell we don't know how that's gonna work they have some good weapons still terry mclaurin over there but I just don't know that they have enough, and that's a really strong division at the top. So, I don't know. I have them at four. What do you think? No, yeah, like I, I agree with you. I mean, Sam Howell. I, I think, I think he has a lot of potential. He seems like he really is going to be good. Terry is just he's Terry, and they have Brian Robinson, mm-hmm. who's like they they have good they have a good basis, but I just don't feel. And their defense is obviously pretty good. But I just don't feel like they're up to snuff of like the Giants, the Cowboys, or the Eagles. I think I in a crappy division like NFC South, they would do really well. And I think they might, maybe then would be, I don't think they'd be 11 and 6, maybe 10 and 7. But right now, I'd, I'd see them more being 8 and 9, 7 and 10, depending on how the divisional matches go. I mean, I, I see that towards, you know, probably closer to what I would consider their ceiling. I have them at. Four wins this year. I could see them anywhere between, Four? yeah, three to 
three to eight wins. I just the that division is good, and they have a tough schedule as well. That that's true. I, I guess so. I was talking more about their ceiling of mm-hmm. them maybe being their ceiling is probably right now is going to be m- maybe maybe nine if Sam Howell becomes like a yeah like a, if the, he like comes out. But like I think really their realistic ceiling is going to be eight wins. But I can. I can definitely see the floor. I don't think the floor is anything lower than three, though. I agree with that. Uh, moving on, let's go with the New York Giants. The Giants, I'm on the fence between putting them at three or at two. I'm going to put them at three, but Brian Dable, I thought, did a really good job with them in his first year last year, I think. And, you know, Daniel Jones is looking better. I still just I don't think he's an elite QB. I think he's a competent QB if you surround him with the right pieces, but I don't see him as elite. The biggest move that I saw them do in the offseason was they went out and they got uh, former Raiders tight end Darren Waller, one of the best tight ends in the league. I think that's going to help their offense, but again, with a tough schedule, I think this team's going to be, you know, cl- around maybe a little bit north of 500. What do you think? Man, it's kind of crazy. I'm putting them at number two. Okay. I, like I, I don't so Dan so I like Danny Dimes, but first of all, he should not be getting paid forty million a year. I okay. think we agree with that. Okay, so he is he's not elite, don't get me wrong. But he's if if given the right he did pretty well last year, given overall pretty trash weapons. Mm-hmm. And this year, I don't know, I think I don't know, I, I'm I'm just I'm just feeling Danny Dimes and I think Saquon is gonna I think Saquon's gonna have another great year. And I just I just feel like their defense is going to carry them. Yeah, I think uh, you could. The Cowboys are right there too. I think they're pretty yeah. much the same tier, the same level. Cowboys still have Dak Prescott. I'd say he's a very, very. I'd say very good, not elite QB. I don't know, man. I don't. That might be a hot day. The reason no Dak is Dak, like Dak at a normal level, like um when he's playing like himself. He's. About what you said, like he's a good, very good, not quite a lead, but like he can get the job done. Mm-hmm. But I think I just don't, I don't trust him. Last year he had thirteen interceptions, or was it fourteen? I don't know. If well, either way, it was yeah. like way, way too many interceptions. I, I don't, I don't know. I just don't feel like that's that's a QB you can trust. And sure, the defense is great. Sure, they still have CD and everything, and. First, and Tony Pollard, though, I'm kind of worried, worried about Tony coming off the ACL. Mm. I get, like, I think he might need another year to come back to full steam. Yeah. Or was it his ACL? His I don't know. What was, I know it was a pretty bad injury. ACL, though. but yeah, he, had, he was hurt. He's coming back. I am actually optimistic about his year this year. Um, CD Lamb, they also brought in a uh, veteran wide receiver, Brandon Cooks, who's, you know, he was with the Saints, he was with the Patriots, with the Rams, with the Texans. So he's been a lot of different places, but it seems wherever he goes, he's effective, and I think he can help them. No, yeah, definitely. But he's not gonna—he's not a super elite number one he's, receiver. He's not a game changer. So well, I think Dallas will be all right. I think they'll be above five hundred, but they're not winning this division because the winner of this division, in my and I think most people's opinion, for the first time, and it's been probably about a decade now, back to back. NFC East champions, Philadelphia Eagles, who were in the Super Bowl last yeah. year, winning the NFC Championship. Um, they got, what, do you, what do you have the record as? Fourteen and three. Oh man, I don't, I don't agree with that. All right. I, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing their ceiling being thirteen and four. Okay. I'd, I'd probably see them being eleven and six or twelve and five. Last year they had a record like that, but that was with, frankly, a joke of a season. They had. Basically, no. Ga- not, not they had games, an easy schedule. But they, they had very few games against real Super Bowl mm-hmm. contenders, and now they have so many games against stronger teams that I don't know. I, I don't. I, I don't see them doing as well as they did last year. And also, personally, I, I don't. I know Hertz is good, but I would. I don't like him as a QB as much as I like. I would like. Joe Burrow or someone who is who's more in the mm-hmm. passing game, I just I, I just don't stand by a QB who has that much in the running game because what happens if they just get shut down? They can't pass as well. That's a good point. I mean, they still got AJ Brown, and it seems as though 
you know, the back to back defending college football national champion Georgia Bulldogs. They seem to be able to acquire a lot of their yeah. players defensively. Definitely. I, I mean, that the cornerbacks are decent, but that defensive line, I'd say, is the best in the NFL yeah, right. right now. No question. But also, what do you think about the whole idea of Jalen Hurts being elite? Do you think he's elite, or do you think it's more the fact that he has so many weapons around him? I mean, I think in order to be an elite QB, you need to have weapons around you. It's not often that you can be considered an elite quarterback and not have much around you. I'd say pretty much every quarterback needs that. But I do think he's an elite QB. I mean, he's young, he, and he's also dynamic because he can both throw the ball well and he can run the ball well. So there's just a lot there. And, one, I mean, think back to the Super Bowl, all those, you know, short plays where he was able to just – plow through and get the extra yard that the Eagles needed to get the first down. And he was doing that all last year. So, I mean, I think that makes him super valuable. I have him as an elite QB. Yeah, I would I would have him, honestly, in the same, in a high, like just slightly higher than where I would put Dak, like when he's playing like himself. Mm-hmm. Like I'd put, like I'd put both of them at the, I'd put Jalen Hurts at the border of being elite and being very good. All right. But let so do you want to switch divisions? Let's talk yeah. about here. Yeah, I have an interesting one. Let's talk about the North. All right. So, first of all, I want to start this out. I don't like Justin Fields. I just don't. I, I don't. I don't like him. He's sure he's a great runner and he's he's amazing at fantasy. I'm not gonna argue that. Mm-hmm. But he's just not great on the field. He he just doesn't hit passes. Okay. Yeah, I think he's. But now he's got DJ Moore. Yeah, but DJ Moore can't catch it if it's 20 feet to the left of them. <laughs> no, but, um, like, Jalen Hurts is a better, and Lamar, they're better versions of that mobile QB. Like, they still okay. have that aspect of, like, they're definitely more geared towards running, but they still have a good aspect of passing. But Justin Fields is like, he's like, the running is dialed up to 10, and his passing is has taken a big hit compared to them. Yeah. So, I see what you're saying with the Bears here. I mean, they traded their number one pick, and they were able to acquire DJ Moore and a lot of other resources. I think that was a good trade for them because they already have Justin Fields, who they claim is their franchise QB, and they believe in him. So, there was no need to go up there and take Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, or any of those guys. So, I get why they did what they did. I, I think it was a smart move from a GM perspective this year. I personally have them finishing third in the North at eight and nine. I know you're not as high up there on them. There's other people who are higher on them. I, I think seven or eight wins is about right for them this year. Yeah, so I'm, I'm putting them at probably four or five. Mm. I'm just, I, I just don't see it. I, I just don't see Justin Fields producing like a really mm-hmm. strong offense. Like he's, He's a great player on his own. The question is, can he produce an offense? Because an offense isn't just one player. Yeah. But I think that... I kind of wonder, though, like, if the Bears don't produce this year, do you think they're going to try to tank for Caleb Williams? I think the Cardinals... Actually, the Cardinals might get Caleb. There's just so many other teams out there. I mean, I, I look at the Bears as kind of a sort of middle-of-the-pack team. So even if they fell short of you know being in the middle around... 16th pick or 17th pick if they fell down to let's say 10 there's just so many teams ahead of them I just don't see that happening I think Caleb Williams most likely will be a top 3 pick so he's, he's going to go definitely to the card and I'm guessing and that, I don't think they'd give up on fields that quickly actually, either well I don't think he might the Cardinals might stick with Kyler just a little yeah, bit more that's, I think I think so they paid him too much that's that's a conversation for later yeah, the Cardinals are Cardinals, a mess right now we'll get then, to them and the Buc- later Caleb probably goes to Bucks, but anyway. All right, two or yeah, yeah, <laughs> thanks yeah, for that. Yeah. But uh, to dive into the Green Bay Packers, they had Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers for a long time, was able to win a Super Bowl with each of those guys. Now, new era in Green Bay with Jordan Love leading the offense. I see this team as a team that I think is going to be around four to five wins. However, they have a much higher ceiling than that because their schedule is not – that tough and if they're somehow able to surpass expectations they could surprise people and maybe get up there seven wins or so eight wins but I don't see them as an above 500 team making the playoffs okay. so what I would have them as is I would have their for the Packers so I 
I, I I like Love. I feel like people don't don't give him enough credit, but I think mm -hmm. from what I've seen, he seems like he definitely knows what he's doing. I mean, he's watched one one of the better quarterbacks of our of our time, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. And he has good weapons. Romeo Dobbs is all right, but I, I I like Christian Watson. I think he's great, and they still have Aaron Jones. And Aaron Jones is he he can he can catch pretty well. Yeah, so, I I think I think his offense is good enough that he'll get carried to. Personally, I would have him at I think I'd have him at five or six, Sorry. but I think that their ceiling might be eight. That's what I would. Okay, think. I think we're around the same place then. Yeah. So we both have him at four, correct? Or? I, I would have. The, f the floor being probably five or six. That's what I put Yeah, but what place in the division do you have? Oh, them? yeah. I would have them... Hmm. I, I, I'd i have them over the Bears. Okay. So you but got them I, I wouldn't... Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Bears above them in third if Justin Fields does pan out. That's fair. I, um... I don't see the Bears going higher than third, though. I've been flip-flopping a little bit on... Who I'm going to pick to win this division. But in second place, I got the Minnesota Vikings. I think people are underrating them. I think Kirk Cousins is a better quarterback than he oftentimes gets credit for. They lost Alvin Cook. But sure, they still have Justin Jefferson, the best receiver in the league. And they still have a very good running back with Alexander Madison there. So I think the Vikings could be a good team. I think their offense is still very good, and they could win 10 games. That's where I have them. However, the defense, I, I don't think defense the defense is going to be good. They're going to be bad. I think yeah. that's going to hold them back. Yeah, no, definitely. So I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in Kirk. I, I love Kirk. Yeah. I, I think he's great. Besides prime time, he's, 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 <laughs> he's great. He's great. Um, yeah, I would... I put them at second too. I, I like obviously everyone likes Justin Jefferson. Mm -hmm. He's the he's the best wide receiver, except the Eagles fans who think AJ Brown is insane. <laughs> but um, but anyway, so I think I think Justin Jefferson is great. Kirk Cousins is great. I liked trading away Dalvin Cook. Not trading away. Sorry, not not signing him again. Yeah, I agree. Because he was just he's he's aging and he's losing production and. I'm a little unsure about Alexander Madison. He hasn't had the best stats, but he's going to get a lot of touches and a lot of chances to prove himself. I feel like good I, about him. I drafted him in fantasy because I knew, because mm -hmm. they're going to give him a lot of chances and he's going to get mm -hmm. touches on the ball. And I think I, I think he could definitely turn into maybe a top, like in terms of like skill, not fantasy production, maybe like top, maybe like 12 to 15 okay. running back, I think. But he could also not pan out and could be... I think still because of his touches, though, he's still going to be maybe in the 20s. All right. Now to the division winner. For the first time, the Detroit Lions. You're, winning you're acting the like NFC You're, you're acting North. like like, like, um, like a commentator. You're like really emphasizing it. Is it the that Detroit important The Detroit Lions. Yes, because I watched Hard Knocks the year that they were on. I think it was last year. And I... I really fell in love with their culture and their coaching style. You got over there, MCDC, Motor City Dan Campbell yeah, leading the true. charge. His introductory press conference talking about how they're going to just keep getting back up and taking chunks out of everybody until they're the last one standing. I love his mentality. Aiden Hutchinson from Michigan, outstanding defensive player. Should have gone number one overall a year ago, I think. Yeah. They have some other good pieces there. Jared Goff, I believe in him. I think he is very good quarterback. I'd say he's top ten in the league. Amon Ross St. Brown. Draft him every year in fantasy. Really good receiver. And then they got uh, Jameer Gibbs now at running back. They just seem to keep drafting talent. And I believe this team, I believe that they will win the division this year. Oh, definitely. I, I think so, too. I... Goff is criminally underrated, man. He's he's he does his job great. Like he he really puts up a lot of points. People don't give him enough credit. I really like Amon Ra. I think he's he's a great receiver. He gets a lot of touches to the ball. Like they like Goff really loves throwing to him, and Amon Ra really can just get open. Mm -hmm. And Jameer Gibbs, I, I I'm not super super sure about the trade because they did trade away a lot. I understand it. But I almost wish they would have kept Jamal Williams. Yeah. I get Jamal Williams is wanting a lot of money. I understand that. But, like, I don't know. I feel like Jameer is mainly a receiving back. And it's kind of strange to take one 
when the receiving core is already pretty good with DJ Shark and Amon Ra. You you don't know though. I just no, I, I feel like that offense will be good. I got okay, him. Okay, okay, yeah, no, I, no. I got him at eleven wins. I could see them getting up to twelve. That's that's yeah. about where yeah, I'm. I got him. I got him go. ten to twelve. All right, let's go now to the NFC South, which is now wide open. With the GOAT's departure into retirement, Tom Brady, after 23 years, hanging it up. So that opens things wide up. This is this could be anybody's division, honestly. Yeah, okay, so who do you have in fourth? I think we're going to both have the same person. Tampa Bay? Yeah. Yep. Okay, I don't... There's not even much to talk about. Tampa Bay is just a disaster, man. Kyle Trask. Mm, that's a hot take. Uh, I don't know. I don't like Kyle... I don't know how he's going to so, perform. Baker Mayfield will be starting the season... I saw Kyle Trask in college, and I think he's better than he's being given credit for. I I think he could be good. It's way too early to tell. We haven't seen no, him even, play. He thinks, even though he, even if he is good, his team is atrocious. All right. I'd, I mean, there's still, what, two and a half years after a Super Bowl run? No, no I understand. So, I mean, you still got guys in that locker room who are, have experience. Mike Evans, I'd say, is still good. But they just didn't have all the pieces. And we saw it last year. We saw Tom Brady, for the first time in his career, unable to get a team above 500 in 23 years. And that's their, the holes in the team really started to show last year and started to crumble. And now that the biggest piece of the puzzle is gone, just like the Patriots, the first year they were without Tom, I think, the Bucs are going to experience a lot of issues, and it's going to be a challenge. And, you know, they don't have Bill Belichick there over in Tampa Bay to help make things run smoother or whatever. So I think it's going to be a challenge. So we got them there. I, I look at them as a three- to four-win team. That, that's what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm leaning towards a rebuild. I don't see yeah. them. I don't see them doing anything more with Mike Evans and... Um, Chris Godwin. Yeah, I like Chris Godwin. I, I like Chris Godwin. Um, I like Mike Evans, maybe not as much. I, I don't mm-hmm. see, I don't see all the hype some people give him. I some people really hype him up. I don't, I don't see a thousand yards a receiver being as important now with the longer season, sixteen to seventeen games. Yeah. Like, but that that that's for another day. But what I'm saying is, I just, I don't know. I definitely do not see them over four wins, and I just think that they might have to just cut their losses, try to get Caleb Williams, and try to start again. Yeah. You're really all in on this Caleb Williams. I, I like him a we, lot. We haven't even seen what Kyle Trask is in the NFL yet. No, 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 no. no. I know. I just, I've just watched Caleb Williams, mm-hmm. and I like him. Okay. All right. Um, I, I just think that he's. I'm not gonna say he's like. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say he's the next Tom because he definitely because I because yeah. I cannot say that. I would. I I cannot say that. What I'm saying is I think he shows a lot of promise. I would agree, but it's still very early. No, definitely. All right, so. For three, I got number one overall pick, Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers. I mean, they got Bryce Young, but they gave up a lot to get him. I just still, I don't know about how good that team is. They still have a lot of holes and weaknesses. I think they're better than Tampa, but I don't think they're in the top two in their division. I, I know some people think they could. They could win the division because it's open. So I, I would, if everything goes to how it's expected, I would have the Panthers one to two games below the Saints. Mm-hmm. But I think if Bryce Young really shows the quarterback he can be, I have him over the Saints. Okay. Um, I I think that that's he's fair. he's set, he has really good pocket awareness and maturity for a quarterback who just went into the league, and I think that he could really change change the team's tra- trajectory and go ahead of the Saints, who are I mean they have Derek Carr. Derek Carr is. He's good, mm-hmm. but he's not like he's not great. And they, I don't know. I would. I think. What do you have them at their floor? For four. Carolina, their floor three or four wins. I'd say their ceiling is around eight, maybe. I I think they're probably gonna. Uh, what did I have on it? I um, let's see what do I got here. Um, yeah, I did my predictions. I had them at 7-10. That sounds about right. So, yeah. yeah. So, I would have them... I, I think I agree with you. I think their floor is definitely 3 or 4. I'd say their their ceiling is probably 7. Mm-hmm. I don't think 8. Eight's a little much. Yeah. But, and then the Saints... I So, I I have the Saints at that... I, I told you about the spot. I would have the Saints at... I think their floor is higher than... 
Panthers, I would have their floor mm-hmm. probably about five. Veteran but, QB, Derek Carr. Yeah, no, but I could see them easily going five to seven wins. Mm-hmm. All right. I I would agree with that. I, I put New Orleans a little bit higher. I think the veteran quarterback, Derek Carr, you still have a young receiver out there, Chris Olave. I mean, Kamara's got the suspension to start off the year, but you still have... I mean, you still, I forget the name of their backup, but he's good. And their defense is really good. So, I got the Saints at 9-8. and eight. Okay, that's fair. I think the backup's Jamal. Oh, Jamal's yeah. Jamal's on the Saints. I think so. I think yeah, that's right. Yeah, Jamal's good. Yeah. But, I, so, I, I love Taysom Hill, first of all. Yeah. But, um, I, I like Michael Thomas coming back this year. So, but if he, if he gets injured, that, that's where I have them going 5-7. Yeah. to seven. I think they could okay. easily get to 9 or 8. But, like... I don't know Olave. I don't know. I think I think he could be good, but mm-hmm. I think that it it could go either way. But especially, I'm worried about Kamara and Michael Thomas. I'll put their floor at six, their ceiling at eleven, and my prediction at nine, maybe ten. I'd say nine. I'd say, yeah, okay, that's fair. And then I'm guessing, and for number one, obviously, we have the Falcons. I'm on the fence about who's winning this oh, division. Okay. I am. I'm gonna be honest, but. I mean, you got Desmond Ritter. Second year, he was backing up Marcus Mariota last year. Not exactly stellar last year. Yeah. So, I don't know. This is just a big question mark. And this is his opportunity. I think Atlanta can be sneaky good. I mean, Johnny Smith was good with Tennessee. Didn't work out well here in New England. So, I mean, an opportunity for redemption. Who knows what's going to happen. They have a lot of maybe. Is Drake London still... A lot of potential, but you don't know with him. You got B. John Robinson, who we talked about earlier. I mean, they have a lot of weapons who could be yeah. good. We just no. we don't know. I th- I think Atlanta's got the best offense in this division. Oh, no However, question. New Orleans has the better defense. That that that's probably true. So I no matter the beef I got with Bijan, I think he's gonna be. I think he's gonna be good no matter what. Mm-hmm. And I I, I like Al I think he's I think he's a solid back, and I think. Maybe he would be better as a starting back on another team, but obviously it's great that he's going to be the backup to Bijan starting off the season. I don't know where it's going to go from there. Drake London. Here's the thing. London had big boomer bust weeks, and I think it's going to depend on how Desmond plays. Yeah. So I think if Desmond shows up, Drake's going to do great. But I think if Desmond plays like Desmond did last year, I don't think Drake's going to show up. Yeah. And then obviously, I like Kyle Pitts, but he... Question is, is he finally going to get touches? I don't know. Let's see. There's a lot of ifs on that team, which yeah. sets their you know their floor low, but their ceiling, I think, is super yeah, I'd, high. I'd say their floor is... I'd put, them at, put their floor at five or six. I'd, put their, I'd say six. I'd, I'd say their ceiling is... I'd, I'd say their ceiling is 11. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm at like nine or ten for them. I'm going to have them at nine. I have them at nine. I, I think it's a toss-up on who's going to win that division. I mean, I feel like New Orleans, but Atlanta is really... They have so much upside on top of there. It's it's tough pick. It's a toss-up there. Anyway. Yeah, no. um, so, last, last division, division of the yep. NFC. So the West. The Rams, Cardinals, 49ers, Seahawks. So we don't even need to talk about who's last. It's the Cardinals. <laughs> Disaster. That's about it. I, I think there's no point about talking talking about them. I think they're, I think they're ceilings. Like, maybe three wins. I agree. Uh, I'd say their their floor <laughs> zero. Their ceiling, I would say, is four, and that might be generous. Okay. I I don't I don't see them going zero wins. Zero wins. Is I hard. think they're gonna win one or two. I I put them at one or two. Yes. Okay. So, so I mean, they lost D Hop over the off season. We'll talk about that a little bit. Just to mention that they lost their best receiver, Kyler's out for a bit. I just Kyler's also playing COD too much. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about it. So, yeah, that's where we're at. So, Who's your number three, Conrad? Okay, this one, I, I, this this division's pretty sad in stone. Obviously, it, what is it for you, the Rams? Yeah, I have the Rams as well. Yeah, so, Matt Stafford, I was a little wary about him last year because last, two years ago, he was great in like the first three quarters of the season. Last quarter, he fell off, and then that kind of continued into last year, but he was injured, so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Cooper Cup, obviously, elite wide receiver. Gets a lot of touches on the ball. He, he's like I don't know. He's like a smart receiver. Mm-hmm. I think I think he'll, he'll be great. I agree. I if he can stay healthy. 
that, I mean, he, he had, he didn't really get injured this year that he broke out. But I, I have a lot of faith in Cam Akers. So I know you drafted him last year, like, what was it, like 20th or something like that? It's like 38th. Yeah, he did not have a hot year. He was like, what, 2 and 15? 2 and 13? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, wait, you, won, you didn't win a game, did you? No, I won a game. Shut up. You won one game. Shut but up. But anyway. You don't okay. have any championships. You lose in the championship every year. It's that is true. Does. But okay. So besides that, so I, I think Cam Cam was doing great at the Terralenda last year, and I think he'll carry over. Maybe not the same steam because he was getting like what? what? He, 100 yards a game. So I think in fantasy it was like 20-something points or like high or like low fantasy 20s. Fantasy doesn't matter. No, I, I know. He I could know. be decent. I don't think he can be elite. Definitely not. I think he can be a good, solid running back, but nothing elite. I have their floor at six wins, their ceiling at ten wins, and my prediction for them at eight. I still think they're being undersold a little bit here. I mean, they had a Super Bowl a year and a half ago, so I just I think they had a lot of injuries, and people are underestimating them and underrating them, but they still have a lot of weaknesses, so that's I, where I got I agree them. With you. So I'm at, I have them at three. So I have their floor at probably six, and I would have their ceiling at probably nine. I'd guess, I, I think they'd go eight. Okay, we're about in the same yeah. spot. And then obviously, what's second for you? Seattle. Seattle. Yeah. I, I like Geno. Geno, yeah. I, I think he's going to be a great quarterback. I don't think he's going to produce the same season as last year, but I don't think he needs to. I think. I wouldn't say great, I'd say good quarterback. I think he's better than Danny Dimes, personally. I agree. At this point in time, I'd say that's true. He's also got DK Metcalf and, and Tyler Lockett, yeah. who and, I really like both of them. And they have Smith and the Jigba, right? Yeah. So, I mean, defensively, they're all right. I mean, Pete Carroll, uh, he's really good head coach. He's had a successful career. You had Russell Wilson there, and, you know, he struggled without him in Denver. I mean, the one big mistake of his career uh, we benefited from when he decided to throw the ball at the one-yard line in the Super Bowl when he had Marshawn Lynch. But, hey, we'll take it. Thank you, Malcolm yeah. Butler. So, so what do you? What would you have their floor at? Floor, I'd have the floor. At, I think seven. I think seven or eight. And I'd have their ceiling at eleven, personally. I have this ceiling. I think ten, ten or eleven. Eleven, I'd say 11, 11 or twelve. Eleven. Okay, okay. I I predict them to win nine or ten games. I'm gonna go ten. I pre- I predict them to go ten too. Okay. All right, and then obviously, 49ers. Question is, okay, so they're gonna win the division and they're gonna be over five hundred. Question is, what do you think the record's going to be? I got them at 13-4. and four. I mean, Brock Purdy, I know people still have questions, but I like him. Mr. Irrelevant. I, I, like, I like the guy. I like the hype. And all the pieces around him, you got George Kittle, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk. I mean, you have all these good pieces on the That's offense, CMC. and their defense is really good. And <laughs> Christian McCaffrey, too. We didn't yeah, and Joey Bosa just signed a new deal. Yeah, so. he signed a monster deal today. So their defense is elite. Their offense, he's got all the pieces around him, and he looked like the guy last year. So yeah. I got them doing that. I, I have them as the two seed in the NFC, only behind the Eagles. Yeah, no, I wouldn't be surprised if 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 this year Purdy proves to be a good quarterback. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to make a Super Bowl run with him. I, I think I, I like Purdy yeah, I like sure. the hype I think he so he's not I'm not going to say he's, he's a talented quarterback because he's not the most talented but he know he's able to navigate the pocket pretty well mm-hmm. he's showing good skills and awareness for a quarterback who was drafted as Mr. Relevant who do you have coming out of the NFC for the Super Bowl Super Bowl mm. just from the NFC second so you got Niners, you got Eagles. Let's see. So, Lions, so I have so yes, yeah, so Eagles. So Eagles, Lions, Falcons, Niners. Yeah. And then I'd say the wild cards. Ooh, okay. That that's kind of tough now. I don't I don't know exactly who to put. My wild cards are Minnesota. Seattle and between Atlanta and New Orleans, whoever doesn't win that division, those are my three wild cards. Okay, that's fair. I would definitely put Minnesota and Seattle. Wait, that means you're not putting the Cowboys? I I'm on the fence with the Cowboys. I think they have a chance. I'd 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 put the Cowboys the Giants okay. personally. I could see that. I, I don't just... I don't see the Saints and the Falcons personally. All right. All right. I see what you're saying. I mean, I, I could see that as well. I mean, if you're picking eight teams and then obviously seven make it, 
I would add the Cowboys in there. So that's what I got. And then the Giants have a chance. But for my NFC champion this year, obviously very early. A lot can happen with injuries. I'm going with the 49ers. I don't like the big back-to-back with the Eagles. A lot can go wrong. Tough schedule. I'm going 49ers here. What do you got? I, I agree with you. I think it'll be a – I don't know about AFC. It could, AFC could go a lot of ways. But yeah. I think I think Niners will be All in right. Super Bowl. Well, we gotta, I'm going to push stop to this so we can start our AFC edition, and we'll have enough storage for that video as well. But there we All go. Right. All right. All right.